Today I'm going to explain to you the difference between k-means and k-nearest neighbor. We are going to be looking at similarities and we are going to be looking at differences and we are going to take an example of this by plotting uh, or performing a plot or a simple demonstration of how both of them works. So let's start by talking about the differences between the two. For k-nearest neighbor, we have that this falls under supervised learning, supervised learning, and for k-means, this falls under unsupervised learning. So let me take a pen. So this falls under unsupervised. So I'll come back to this in a minute, unsupervised learning. For K nearest neighbor is used for classification. Remember that in classification we have we under supervised learning we have classification and regression as the two subcategories under supervised learning. While in clustering we have in in unsupervised learning we have clustering, dimensionality reduction, and density estimation. So today we are talking about clustering. Okay. So now we are talking about supervised learning and classification. This is having to do with k-nearest neighbor. So what it means is if you are given a data set, on both cases, both k means you'll be given a data set. So let's now look at the difference between the two data sets. Because if is supervised learning, you have a data set that has labels. For unsupervised learning, we have a data set with no labels. So what is the meaning of all of this? So let's take, for instance, a data set with labels is given as something like this. You have X and you have Y. So you have values here. Let's say 1, 2, 4, 8, and so on. And then you have 2, 4, 8, 16, and so on. So along the line, the problem of supervised learning or problem of classification will be that if you are given a new value of X O, what would be the corresponding value of y? Sometimes it could be x1, x2, and you have a corresponding y. So here we have two independent variables and one dependent variable. Or we can say two features and one class. So it means that this x1 and x2, whatever they are, must belong to one of these classes. Right? So 1, 7, C1. So if you are now giving another set of data, x1, x3, you now need to predict what class it belongs. Is this C1 or C2 and so on? So this is basically how classification works. You are giving set of data, and at some point, the class is not is omitted, and you need to figure out or classify the independent variable into the into a class. In case of unsupervised learning or in case of clustering, we are given a data set. For instance, we are given x, 1, 3, 4, 5, and you are simply told this is a data set, just makes sense out of it. So you find out that in case of unsupervised learning, we are flying blind. We kind of don't even know what this data is all about, but that is what it is clustering or unsupervised learning appear to be a bit more difficult. So it can also be X1 and X2, both being, both of them being uh, independent variable. So when you are given all of this, you are told make sense out of it. This does not mean that one correspond to three, one correspond to four, no, they are independent. There is no classes that you can actually relate it to. So they are simply set of data points and you have told simply make sense out of it. I think it's clearer this way. Let's now illustrate how they work by plotting using a graph. So let's say in case of supervised learning, we have a data set, or let's call it a training data set that we've actually plotted this training data set. So we have 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we have all this data set and we've plotted them and we've used colors to differentiate what classes they belong, right? So now the question in K, uh, nearest neighbor is that, or the problem you are going to be solving is that you are given a new data point, data set, a data point. Let's say these data points, and you are told to find the classes, it, the class it belongs. Is this C1, which is equal to blue? Or is this C2, which is equal to red? So in this case, your work is to classify this new data point into a class, either a blue or a red class, right? Good. So the approach in case of K nearest neighbor is called a probabilistic approach. So let me just write it. It's different from the approach for K means. Probabilistic. Right? So what it means is that K nearest neighbor is going to calculate probability of belonging to red class and calculate probability of belonging to blue class and then assign this data point to the class with the highest probability. But the first thing that has to happen is that we need to choose k. So let's say k is equal to let's say 6. And also in this case before you do it you need to choose k as well. So k means is it equal to six means the six nearest neighbor to this data point. So if I'm to eyeball it, I could say that the six nearest neighbor to this data point is one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's circle it. Good. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So probability that this new data point belongs to the blue class is total number of blue data points over total number of data points. So probability of blue, let's write it that way. Probability of blue is equal to number of blue is how many? Two over total number, which is one over three. And then it calculates probability of red. In this case, we have four reds over total number, which is six, four over six which is 2 over 3. Therefore, k nearest neighbor algorithm will conclude that this data point belongs to the class with the highest probability. And therefore, we are going to assign this data point to the right class. That is how k nearest neighbor works. It calculates the probability and assigns the class to the point, the class with the highest probability. Let's now see in case of k means. In case of k means, you have also given been given a data, a data set and you are plotting this data set. But remember, we are not given any classes. We are just given bundle of data points everywhere. Right? Good. So we are told to make signs out of these data points. And we are talking now about using k-means clustering to make some signs out of this data point. So the first thing we are going to do is, as well like the k-nearest neighbor, we choose the value of k. So the value of k we choose simply means you need to choose the number of initial clusters. So you randomly cluster them into different clusters. So how you cluster them initially is not very important. So you simply, let's assume you choose that they have to be a red cluster. Seems it will be in this case to be a red one. You also have a blue one. And then we have, let's say a green one, right? Good. So, Give me a second, let me just add a few more uh, data points everywhere, good. So what k-means clustering does, in this k nearest neighbor use probabilistic uh, methods, k-means uses sum of 
squares. Sum of squares distances. So after choosing the value of k and you draw the first cluster, the next thing is to choose a centroid for each of the cluster, or simply calculate the mean of this each of this cluster. Right? So the means is simply the center points. Let's take for instance for the red cluster, we have the center point here. And for the for the for the green one, we have the center point to be somewhere here. And for the blue one, we have the center point as well to be somewhere here. So the next step that K means is going to do is going to calculate the distances of each of these data to each of the centroids. So let's take, for instance, let me use a black pen. It's going to take, for instance, this data set, data point here, this one, and calculate the distance from this to this centroid, from this point to this centroid, from this point to this centroid. Along the line, you find out that the distance from this point to this centroid is actually <coughs> the least distance. So the, the distance from this to this centroid is, le is the least distance. Therefore, we are going to reevaluate our cluster and what we are going to do is to redraw this cluster to accommodate these new findings, this new finding that we've made. Because we now figure out that this data point belongs to the green cluster. After then, it will, see, it will still do a recalculation again for all of them. So the algorithm will actually run for all of them and it will keep readjusting the, 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 the clusters until it gets uh, a balanced or it's, it comes to a situation whereby nothing changes anymore. And in that way, we, are, we say that it has the algorithm has converged. So that is how k means uh, clustering works. It uses sum of squares, and this in this case it uses probability. So if you want in-depth explanation of these two, you can look at the link in the description box. You can find a link to where I explain in more details how k means and how k neighbors uh, work, k nearest neighbor works. I'd like to thank you for viewing. I also like to recommend you join my machine learning 101 lecture series, which is ongoing right now. You'll see it as well in the description box. Feel free to like this video. Feel free to share it around as well. And also let me know if there is something you find or some recommendations you'd like to make.